Bruins split their Thanksgiving weekend games. Daryl Knight, The Standard, Uxbridge. Thanksgiving weekend was a time for the Uxbridge Bruins to resume hostilities with their two oldest rivals, the Little Britain Merchants and Port Perry Lumberjacks. The Bruins would extend their recent winning streak to five games with a 5-3 to three win over the Merchants on Friday night at the Bear Den, before falling 4-1 to one on Sunday afternoon in Port Perry. Little Britain entered Friday night's game with a familiar face behind the bench. Former Bruins player and coach Matt Muir, who recently took over coaching duties for the shopkeepers after the surprising resignation of the former coaching staff. Uxbridge did not provide a warm welcome to their former bench boss, with Quinn Meek scoring a pair of first-period goals to open up a 2-0 advantage. In the second period, Brandon Mancia's first tally of the season extended the Uxbridge's lead to 3-0. However, the third period saw some signs of life in the visitors, as the two teams engaged in some thrilling end-to-end -end action that thrilled the almost 400 fans in attendance. After Jake Rigolo scored to push Uxbridge's lead to 4-0, the Merchants would finally break up Logan Carter's shutout bid when Everett Corneal scored. Ty Roberts would reply shortly afterwards for the Bruins, and the Merchants would add a pair of late goals from Zach Krawlicki and Owen Worsley to round out the scoring in a 5-3 Bruins victory. On Sunday afternoon, the Battle of North Durham resumed in a matinee matchup at Scugog Arena as the Bruins ventured to Port Perry for the first time in the 2023-24 Provincial Junior Hockey League PJHL season. The two arch-rivals battled throughout the scoreless first period, with Bruins goalie Andrew Clotten and his Lumberjacks counterpart Gavin Bratt making several sensational saves. A pair of Port Perry goals near the midway point of the second period opened a 2-0 advantage for the home side, but the Bruins would respond shortly afterwards with a power play goal from Gavin Graham, assisted by Anthony Lamana and Josh Zellig, to cut the lead to 2-1 after 40 minutes of play. Although the Bruins were able to muster 12 shots on the Port Perry goal in the third period, none of them could find their way to the back of the net, and another two Lumberjacks goals, including an empty net tallied, sealed a 4-1 win for the home side. Loose Pucks Live streaming has resumed in the PJHL with the launch of PJHLTV.ca, which is currently available for a free trial through the website. Eventually, all 63 teams from across the province will have their games broadcast through the platform. However, the Bruins will be maintaining their in-house video crew for their popular highlight packages through their Facebook page and YouTube channel. This Thursday, October 12th, the Bruins are back on the road when they travel to Bowmanville for a 7.25 p.m. game against the Ore Division leading Clarington Eagles, who were unbeaten through their first eight games of the season. The Bruins will be back at the Bear Den on Friday, October 13th, looking to scare up a win against the North Kawartha Knights in their 7.45 p.m. tilt. Open House offers opportunity for input on proposed Provincial Park. Daryl Knight, The Standard. Uxbridge. Earlier this year, the province announced it intends to create the first urban Provincial Park in Uxbridge, and residents will be able to learn more about the plan at an upcoming Open House. The public open house is scheduled for Monday, October 23rd from 4 to 7.30 p.m. at the Uxbridge Secondary School Cafeteria, located at 127 Planks Lane. Local residents are encouraged to attend the drop-in session to learn more about the proposed park, partner organizations involved with the project, as well as how to provide their comments to the appropriate agencies. The proposed provincial park was first announced as part of the province's 2023 budget and could include approximately 1,300 acres of provincially owned lands. There are several agencies involved with the project to aid in identifying the full recreational and protection potential of the planned urban provincial park, including the Township, the Region of Durham, Toronto and Region Conservation Authority, Green Durham Association, the SCAD Foundation, the Lake Simcoe Region Conservation Authority, and the Nature Conservancy of Canada. A press release from the township noted it is expected the province will be conducting site assessments and evaluations in the coming months to gauge the feasibility of the provincial park in Uxbridge. The measures are expected to include consultation with Indigenous communities, local stakeholders, partner organizations, and other environmental organizations before plans can be finalized. Make every bean count. Gene Goodchild, Taylor Forder Insurance Brokers Limited. Scugog. As part of the Your Community Brokers group of brokerages across Ontario, 
Taylor Ford Insurance Brokers Limited will be doing its part in running a food drive for the month of October. We are calling on clients and friends to consider joining with our team in supporting this effort, said Jean Goodchild, president at Taylor's. Operation Scugog needs our help. They need filling their shelves for the upcoming holidays. The wish lists of items for this time of year include gift cards to purchase fresh items such as dairy, fruits, and veggies, as well as those non-perishables the food bank is low on at any given time. Sugar, cereal, jam, peanut butter, applesauce, jars, kids' snacks such as pudding cups, fruit cups, and jello cups, canned pasta, personal hygiene items, toilet paper, shampoo, deodorant, and toothbrushes, pancake mix, syrup, honey, and condiments. The goal for us is to have 200 pounds of food collected by the end of October, Jen continued. Operation Scugog has made it very easy for all of us to help out. Physical donations of food or gift cards, checks, or cash can be dropped off at either Taylor Ford Insurance Brokers Limited in Port Perry, Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., or directly at Operation Scugog. Welcome to You've Got to Be Kidding, a podcast that offers a different perspective of life around us. Listen now to author Jonathan Van Bilsen. It's time again to look at some of the origins of phrases in the English language. Digging deep, I find it interesting to see the meanings behind some commonly used expressions. For example, the Louvre Palace in France was believed to have a network of listening tubes so that it would be possible to hear everything that was said in different rooms. People say this is how Queen Catherine de' Medici discovered political secrets and plots. Hence the phrase, beware the walls have ears. Another saying is bury the hatchet. This comes from negotiations between Puritans and indigenous men who would bury all their weapons, making them inaccessible while they were dialoguing. Have you ever been caught red-handed and wondered where the saying came from? There was an old law stating that if someone butchered an animal that did not belong to him, he would only be punished if he was caught with blood on his hands. If one was caught with the meat but the hands were clean, he would not be punished. When referring to one's family over friends, the term blood is thicker than water often comes up. Even though many think this saying means that we should put family ahead of friends, it actually meant the complete opposite. The full phrase was, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, and it referred to warriors who shared the blood they shed in battles together. These blood brothers were said to have a stronger bond than biological brothers. Many people think the phrase, don't look a gift horse in the mouse, comes from the Trojan horse story, but actually it stems back to when people were buying a horse. They would determine the horse's age and condition based on its teeth, and then decide whether they wanted to buy it or not. This is the reason why people use this idiom to say it is rude to look for flaws in a thing that was given to you as a gift. If people pretend not to notice, one might say, turn a blind eye. This phrase originates with naval hero Horatio Nelson, who used his blind eye to look through his telescope. This way he was able to avoid signals from his superior who wanted him to withdraw from battle. He attacked nevertheless and was victorious. When leaving a party, you can often hear someone say, one for the road. During the Middle Ages, the condemned ones were taken to their execution through what today is known as Oxford Street. During this final trip, the cart would stop and they would be allowed to have one final drink before their death. If you have any interesting sayings and their origin, send them to me here or on social media. I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen and this is You've Got to Be Kidding. TDLSB director uses Thanksgiving message to reflect on start of 2023 to 2024 school year. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Kawartha Lakes. Trillium Lakes District School Board's TDLSB director of education, Wes Hahn, reflected on the start of the school year in a Thanksgiving address to families. In a video posted on YouTube and on the board's website on Thursday, October 5th, Director Hahn stated he feels the school has started off well. Trustees and the senior team are incredibly thankful to our staff, students, and families for a really great start-up to the school year. We've been told it's the smoothest and most stable start-up we've had yet, he said. He noted the board continues to work on priorities in the schools, such as literacy and numeracy, 
We look forward to the school year and the support we're providing staff through our consultant team and our coaches in classrooms. They're doing great work. Director Hahn pointed out the board recently had a successful National Truth and Reconciliation Week. It's a really important week for us here at TDLSB. It culminated with Orange Shirt Day on Friday, September 29th, and a very special live stream event hosted by our elders and knowledge holders from our First Nations. The board is looking to families for their perspectives on how the school year has started. As we did last year, we are going to put out a survey to families on how the startup was, from your perspective, and how learning is going in the classroom. It's really important we hear from you, and we look forward to your responses, Director Hahn concluded. Toronto man arrested in Port Perry for assault, impaired related incident. Dan Kearns, The Standard, Scugog. Durham Regional Police arrested and charged a 29 year old Toronto man in Port Perry on Saturday, September 30th, for assault and for operating a boat while impaired. According to the Durham Regional Police Service, DRPS, at approximately 11.40 a.m., members of North Division responded to an unknown trouble call in the area of Regional Road 21 and Highway 12 in Port Perry. It was reported a male was assaulting a female on the side of the roadway. Police located the female and she was treated for minor injuries on the scene. The male suspect fled prior to police arrival and was last seen at the Port Perry Marina. The Durham Regional Police Marine Unit was called in and located the male operating a boat on Lake Scugog. The male was arrested without incident and his boat was towed back to the marina, a DRPS press release added. The police have not released the name of the suspect, who was later released on an undertaking. The two charges the suspect faces are assault and failure or refusal to comply with a breath demand. Anyone who has further information on this case is being asked to contact Detective Constable Clements of the Major Crime Unit at 1-888-579-1520, extension 5395. You've Got to Be Kidding was presented by X4 Media with permission from the Standard Media Group. We endeavor to make all information contained in this program as accurate as possible at production time. X4 Media and the Standard Media Group are not responsible for any liabilities resulting from information contained in this program. For more information, please visit x4media.ca. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper.